With Fallout 4 now released, it's time to speculate about the next Elder Scrolls, which Bethesda are no doubt already working on. Of course, I don't know what will be in it, but this video will contain things that I consider reasonable, feasible and probable, and also a bit boring. Let's get started. New Engine Game Engine isn't the most exciting part of a game for many people, but it's the thing on which everything is built on and will heavily determine what is and isn't possible in the next game, so it's important for them to get it right. Oblivion and Fallout 3 were based on Game Brio, or Game Brio, or Gamma Brio, or I don't know, it's got a silly name. Skyrim and Fallout 4, the creation engine. It only makes sense that The Elder Scrolls 6 runs on a new engine, designed from the ground up with the Xbox One and PlayStation 4 as the new lowest common denominators. Don't get me wrong, the PC version will still look better, but with newer, more powerful consoles with stronger CPUs and GPUs and substantially more RAM, we can expect a better looking game with fewer limitations than with the previous generation of consoles holding everything back. I'm hoping for a seamless world where cities, castles and caves don't require loading screens to access. Todd Howard has hinted at this in past interviews, noting that the console's 8GB of standard lets them load places before the player even reaches them, making this and improved graphics a possibility. I also want the cities to be bigger than in previous games and for the world to be even more alive. Radiant AI and Oblivion and Skyrim made great strides towards this goal, but I want to see The Elder Scrolls 6 take it further still. I'm talking about adventurers who explore the world on their own and the ability for areas to repopulate themselves with new NPCs. In Skyrim, I grew fed up of shops being left empty after their owners met unfortunate ends. Repopulating shops was promised in an interview talking about Skyrim. Hopefully now it can be made a reality as well as long-lasting vendettas that victims' family members may have towards the player. That's not to say that this isn't without its problems. The beauty of the Elder Scrolls since Morrowind has been its handcrafted nature, and a bit of this magic may be lost should new NPCs be randomly generated, but I have faith that the development team will find a solution to this that works for the series. Better Gameplay I personally feel that each Elder Scrolls has been substantially improved upon over the last one, but the individual elements are still rather basic. Melee combat is a spam fest. Dual wielding magic is more fiddly than it is deep, and stealth is a joke when compared with other game series. It's time for the Elder Scrolls to reinvent these mechanics, borrowing on what works in other game series such as Dark Messiah, Dishonored, and even Assassin's Creed. I love how alchemy has been handled in Skyrim, and hope that the same amount of love and care can be given to all other skills in the sequel. Some may want smithing to return to how it was in Oblivion, or for medium armour or athletics to be reintroduced into the series, but I've personally agreed with the design changes that Skyrim brought about and hope for more adjustments to be experimented with within the sequel. I also love the shout system as a way of letting all players use some of the most powerful spells in the game, particularly the one to make it nice and sunny, definitely the best thing about Skyrim. Encouraging you to unlock them by battling dragons made you behave like the Dragonborn and gave them an additional purpose in game. All in all, I felt that everything in Skyrim tied together nicely and seriously wonder how they're going to top these mechanics in the next game. I'm sure they'll find a way. Quests and Storylines Skyrim had its fair share of interesting and you unique quests, exactly but many will agree that Oblivion's guild missions were a lot stronger in general. Although I feel that Skyrim's main storyline was an improvement, it still felt forced and cheesy to me. Fallout 4's shows signs of improvement, and I'm hoping that this can be built on further for The Elder Scrolls VI. And I'm not against the idea of randomly generated quests, but the ones in Skyrim felt far too generic. They were mostly steal this from so and so or kill so and so. I don't expect these to ever be as enjoyable as handcrafted missions, but they should at least be a little bit more memorable, or at least more fun to play than they were in Skyrim. This will largely depend on the gameplay that the next game has. Games like Shadow of Mordor have shown that, if done right, randomly generated missions can still be fun and challenging experiences. Location well, of course the next game's going to be set somewhere else in Tamriel. Just ignore Akavir for now. According to online polls, Elsewhere seems to be the most popular probably because it's about as different to Skyrim as it can be, which could lead to some original and unique locations. Previous games have specialised on something in particular. With Oblivion, it was the trees. With Skyrim, mountains. I reckon that they could elaborate on the water, which I found severely lacking in Skyrim. But saying that, I don't particularly care where the next game's set. Skyrim could very easily have been a load of boring, generic mountains, and yet it was instead more beautiful and diverse than I could have imagined. I reckon that Bethesda could even pull off Black Marsh if they did it right, filling it with sheer cliffs, caves, forests and jungles. With the next game, I look forward to being surprised. Leveling Oblivion and Skyrim made the world level with you, with varying degrees of success depending on your character build. I can see why they've done this, but I miss the thrill of high-level areas and the sense of progression that you felt from levelling up in Morrowind. 
perhaps controversially, I would like to see the next game go back to the old school style of forcing players to level up for a while before exploring the more out of reach parts of the world. I don't want to feel like a god when I first start the game. I thought that Morrowind handled this very well, with the Blood Moon expansion acting as a very challenging high level area once the main land story became too easy. Storing items. Please, please, please do something about this Bethesda. Skyrim's consoleized menus were horrible to navigate and I'd always end up with loads of pointless stuff that I didn't know what to do with. I know I may be a bit of a hoarder, but Skyrim didn't help matters. I would like better item sorting in the next game so that I could easily drop the least valuable items quickly and easily. I'm sort of torn on how to deal with this problem because part of the appeal of the Elder Scrolls has always been the variety of items within the game. However, I'd rather that places in general contain fewer things of value, but that the things that are, are worth more. It would make tomb plundering a more rewarding and less repetitive experience, rather than raiding hundreds of vases for herbs and scraps of metal. And how about making it so that picking up items of value instantly drops the lowest valued items that you're carrying to stop you from becoming over encumbered? Of course, valuable treasures and items with purpose, such as swords and armour, would have to be dealt with separately for this to work, but I'd happily welcome some kind of automated options that I could focus on the more interesting aspects of exploration when plundering my 50th tomb. Houses and followers. I ended up with a nice little posse of wives, hired swords, pets and summons following me about in Skyrim. If the next game could give them a bit more personality, then it would make them more valuable to me than just an extension of my inventory. Skyrim's expansion, Hearthfire, contains some great ideas that I hope will come as standard in the next game, letting players build the house of their dreams without having to load up modding tools. Which nicely brings me on to… Mods. The Elder Scrolls has always been about installing countless mods. I hope that in the next game, it remains as free and as diverse as with previous games. Unlike previous entries, it will have support on Steam from day one, so if anything, will be even easier to share and to install user mods. Keep it up, content creators. You make these games special. And that concludes what will probably be seen in the next Elder Scrolls game. It would be a bit boring if this is all we get. No doubt there will be many new and exciting ideas as well, but I can't hope to even speculate on what these might be until there's at least something known about the game. I, for one, can't wait.